You're tired of looking at a plain old axe handle, one that has no character at all, and it's just plain Jane. You're tired of looking at that? Stay tuned, because I'm going to show you guys how to do something like this. Add some character to your handles. Welcome back to the channel, guys. It's Wes. I am with, I am from, I am Midgard Axe. How's everybody doing? What are we getting into today? Today we are getting into axe handles. Yeah, axe handles. How to add some character to your axe handles. How to put some character in there, add some color, add a little bit of uh, spice to it. Um, you know, guys, you don't have to do this with every handle, but it's kind of cool to have some axe handles with some character to them. Um, it adds a little bit of uh, fun to the axe throwing experience or chopping experience. You can go around showing off your axe. It's kind of cool. Like this uh, HB Arvika, the Arvika axe, the, the race chopping axe. They call it a race chopping axe. Uh, this, this thing is, is really cool, though. It's, it's got a head on it. It's extremely heavy. But, uh, man, look at this handle, guys. I, I did this handle. Look at that thing. It is gorgeous. It's like a like a red mahogany. Um, man, this thing is nice. It's a really nice looking handle. I get a lot of compliments on it. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into adding some color to your axes and see uh, see what I can teach you guys in this uh, this segment here, and uh, give you some tips and tricks on uh, you know everything I can think of as far as adding color and uh, character to your handles. In the last video, guys, I covered how to thin a handle down. So if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. This is going to be a, a, a part, a series of, on handles. Um, so if you haven't seen that, go, go check it out. I, I give you guys some information on tools to use to thin your handles down and show you how I thin my handles down. But if you guys remember, I was telling you in that video that if you use a throwing axe, not to do this to the knob. Well, this isn't a throwing axe. I don't throw this one. This is a strictly a chopping axe. But I just want to show you guys how cool that looks. Um, just so you guys know, it, this handle is pretty much done. When you do stuff like this, this is pretty much done. Meaning if I have any issues with the head coming loose, which I normally don't, I seat my heads really well. But if ever I did and I need to reseat this, this handle's gone. I'm not going to be able to hit the bottom and seat the head correctly again since I did this. So what I got is what I got on this. And just so you guys know, if you do that, you're more than likely going to be in the same scenario once it's seated and you do this to your handle at the bottom this is what you got until <laughs> you might have to replace your handle uh, if, if you need a minor a minor modification because when you start doing this to your handles guys you're you're set with what you got now so but i thought it was cool i like doing a little i like doing some things different guys i've got a a hundred axes okay so you know get crazy with some of them it's it, it really is okay to do it i mean you know I, some people get all, oh, you shouldn't do that to your axe. Well, if I've got a hundred axes and I want to do something like this, or if you guys want to do something like this, don't let people tell you you shouldn't do stuff. Don't let people tell you that. If you've got a bunch of axes and you want to do some crazy stuff, do some crazy stuff. Don't worry about what people think about you. Do what you want to do. Have fun with axes. People, people get too serious with axes sometimes. There are times where you need to be serious and, and take safety and, and to account, but there's other times where people just need to stop being so serious about some of this stuff and start having fun with it. Because I think when people start being so serious about this stuff, it's like they just, it, it, they, they get burnt out. It's like, oh, I don't wanna do it anymore because they're so serious. Have fun with it. Do some crazy stuff like this, guys. It, it, you'll have a good time with it, and um, I have a good time with it, and it keeps keeps your, your skills up doing crazy stuff like this, um, and it gives you ideas, too. God, I got sweat rolling in my eyes, guys. Um, it, gives you, it gives you really cool ideas. Um, sometimes you'll be working on something, and all of a sudden it'll spark something else in your brain to go, wait a minute, I can do this. So don't, don't, be, don't be afraid to go outside the limits and step outside the box of normal. Guys, I'm way outside the box of normal. Some things I, I tow the party line when it comes to certain things, but other things I couldn't be more different than most people. So have fun with your axe. So whenever I add color to my handles, one of the ways that I add colors, I use a wood dye. I use what's called trans tint. It is a wood dye and the liquid is mixed with denatured alcohol, okay? You guys can get this on Amazon, you can get it anywhere. Um, I will tell you that these are really expensive. This one bottle is like $24, $25 for just one color, but it does a lot. You don't have to use a ton of it. Um, but I will say that before I get into adding color, what I like to do is, is I like to soak a paper towel with denatured alcohol 
and rub it down on my handle. Now, denatured alcohol is not supposed to rain, raise the grain on the wood, but I will tell you it does. So what I like to do is I like to wipe it down with denatured alcohol first, let it raise whatever fibers it can, and then knock it down with sandpaper. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of pour some uh, denatured uh, alcohol on here. And guys, get the, get the fuel. You, want, you don't want a bunch of water in it, the 90% the, the isopropyl alcohol. Don't use that. Use this one right here. It's the denatured alcohol. This one's labeled fuel. It's, uh, it's got a really high alcohol concentrate to it, and um, it doesn't have a ton of water in it. You don't want to put a ton of water on your axe handle, um, especially right before you get ready to refinish it because it'll soak into the uh, fibers of the wood. And then when you go to add the tent uh, or the, uh, the trans tent to it, um, it's not going to go on right because it's mixing with water, okay? So I'll just kind of rub it down a little bit and uh, try to raise whatever grain I can. Like I said, guys, denatured alcohol is not supposed to raise the grain, but I found uh, that it does. And the reason why we want to raise that grain up before we put our trans tent uh, dye on the handle is because if you don't raise the grain first and you add the dye and you put it on your handle, what's going to happen is you're going to have a really nice finish, but then it's going to get real rough. And then you're going to have to go back over it and sand it again, which is going to basically ruin everything you just did. So make sure you use that denatured alcohol to raise the grain first before you start adding your uh, dye to the, to the handle. All right, so now that we've raised the grain, and I can feel it, guys, it's raised it a pretty good amount. In some spots, uh, there's nothing, but in other spots, it has raised it. So what we're going to do now is, uh, after I raise the grain, I'm going to go back over it and hit it with 220 grit sandpaper again, just to kind of smooth it out a little bit more. Like I said before in the last video, I do like a little bit of a rough texture on my axe handles. Um, whenever I sand my handles, I like the right side and then right in here smooth but I do like the left side a little rough to give these fingers something to grab onto. And um, it, it just makes the transition a lot nicer for me, but uh, that, that's kind of why I do that. But we're gonna, just gonna knock this down real quick, kind of knock it down. And uh, you guys, don't sand too deep, okay? If you sand too deep, what's gonna happen is when you, you're gonna go past what you've raised, and then when you go to put the denatured alcohol and the dye back on the wood, it's going to raise the grain again. So you just kind of want to hit it lightly and just kind of just knock off the uh, raised grain that you've raised with the uh, denatured alcohol. All right, so we've got it knocked down and then uh, just take another paper towel and kind of get all that wood dust off if you can. You can use a compressor to blow it off with. I don't feel like pulling mine out. Um, it's hotter than Hades out here. <laughs> it's hotter than Hella out here. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, we got some storms rolling in, guys, again. We just can't get away from this rain. It's literally about to come in again. I can, it, it, it's literally so humid out here and you can feel it. But uh, rub it down, get that, get that dust out, and uh, make sure you get as much dust as you can. It's not a huge deal if you don't get all of it, but just try to get as, mu as much as you can off of it. And then, uh, so let's get into adding some uh, color to this handle. I'm going to move the camera over and give you guys a close-up of this. Um, I don't have a cameraman, so i got to put everything on a tripod. Hopefully that'll change in the future. But uh, I'm going to move you guys a little closer so you can see what I'm about to do. All right, guys, a little tip here. Anytime you are working with wood dye, especially this trans tint stuff, make sure you wear rubber gloves. That stuff will dye your hands, and it doesn't come out for a while. You'll be walking around with what looks like red bloody hands if you're using a red, red mahogany or something, you'll be walking around with your hands red for days. So make sure you put uh, gloves on too. I'm sure that stuff's probably not good for you to soak into your skin. So make sure you guys uh, glove up, okay? Glove up. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're going to mix up our dye. And I've chose to use a brown mahogany and a red mahogany. And what I'm gonna do is, it's gonna be more brown than red. I do want some red uh, undertones in there. So I'm gonna uh, mostly use brown mahogany and I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of red. And uh, the easiest way to do it, guys, is to just, um, what I like to do is I like to start with my base, whatever I'm gonna use the most of. So we're gonna use brown. We're gonna put a lot of that in there, okay? We got that in there. And then we're gonna throw about a quarter to half 
of what I used on the brown, okay? And then after we do that, we're gonna mix it with some denatured alcohol. Just pour it, guys, make sure you don't splash this everywhere either. It's kind of hard to do, but, okay? I don't, I don't use a ton of denatured alcohol. Now, I will tell you this, guys, uh, from using this, I've been using this stuff for a while. Um, the more denatured alcohol you pour in there, the um, lighter the color is going to be. And of course, if you don't put very much in there, the darker the color is going to be. I will tell you guys this too, which is really cool when you're using this uh, dye. If you don't like it, you can always sand it off. Also, if you think that it is too dark, you can always wipe it down with a paper towel with denatured alcohol on it, and it'll lighten your color. So what I like to do is, if I'm gonna do anything, I wanna go darker, because I can always wipe off the excess and make it lighter with uh, denatured alcohol um, paper towels to get the color that I want. So what I do is, is when I go to apply it, I use one of these foam brushes. These are really nice, and I'll also use a paper towel. I will tell you, when you apply this trans tint dye to wood, you gotta go fast, because if you do it really slow, you'll get uh, streaks in your handle where you've let the dye sit for too long. So it's, it's gotta be kind of a fast process, okay? But I don't have to worry about that too much because uh, I'll show you guys later why I don't have to worry about that too much. But if you just wanna put a single coat on there, you gotta move quick. And you can use a paper towel and kind of double it over and kind of wipe as you go to uh, keep that um, trans tint evenly colored on your handle. So what I'll do is I'll just dip it in there. Okay. I'll just start applying it. This stuff, dude, this stuff is like nasty. It'll, it'll drip everywhere. So you gotta be careful with it. I think I may have put too much on there. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Oh yeah, it's exactly the color that I wanted. Ooh. Don't worry about the head. You guys can take denatured alcohol and get it off the head later if you do get it on the head. Some people like doing this with it off the head. I, I don't like doing it off the head and the reason why I don't like doing it off the head is because when you're seating the head, you can probably ruin your finish really quick. So I'll go ahead and just do it while the head's on and then um, I can take it off the head later if I need to. It's not a huge deal. And I'll show you guys why it's not a big deal to me um, if it leaves streak marks. I'll get to that in a minute. But you want to go with the wood grain. Go with the grain um, first. And then you can come back and do it at, at another angle if you want to make sure it gets all in there. But yeah, this is a really pretty color. All right, and after we do that, what I like to do is I'll take a paper towel and kind of just wipe it, wipe it off. Wipe off the excess here. Give it a rub down a little bit here. It's almost like a plum color. Actually is what it is. It's more of like a plum. I don't know if I got any AK fans out there told you guys before I'm a huge gun dude and I do have ARs um, but I'm more of an AK dude I got Polytex and I got all kinds of different AKs my favorite one is my uh, rifle dynamics when Jim Fuller was still at uh, rifle dynamics I got a uh, pistol from him an AK pistol and a uh, full-size rifle from him um, and I love plum colored uh, hand guards on AK they look really cool I got a couple on my uh, seven my AK 74s um, I got a couple different AK 74s and I've got one with a uh, plum hand guard on it and I love that color it's really cool looking so um, guys I will give you a bit of advice if you're outside and you're sweating <laughs> make sure you don't drop sweat on your handle it'll actually take off the uh, dye. This dye is susceptible to water. So before you treat it with a, with a top coat, make sure you kind of keep water away from it if you can, because it will come off if you get any water on it. Spitting, sweating, whatever the case may be, you'll get a drip 
it'll go down and it'll literally take the die down with it. So you gotta be careful with that. If you, that happens, just take the, uh, the brush and go back over it again in that area. Just make sure you wipe it down with a paper towel so you don't have a weird spot. Guys, as you see, um, it really didn't take a ton of dye to uh, do that with. I actually mixed way too much. <laughs> I always do that. I always mix way too much dye and I end up wasting a lot of it. Okay, so what I do is, is I take a Q-tip, okay? I take a Q-tip to get the eye and down there at the bottom where the uh, holes drilled uh, for a lanyard, I'll use a Q-tip. So I'll just kind of dip it in here like so, okay? And then I'll run it along the top. I know all the tips and tricks so I can kind of make a mess because I know how to clean, clean clean it up. I didn't used to know how to do this until I was doing it myself and figuring it out. So, And guys, you can um, put dye back on top to make it a little darker if you want. And then I like to just kind of give it a wipe down and take off the excess. So now with the eye is that's coming out of the ax eye is the same color as the handle. All right, and now we're gonna take the uh, Q-tip here and um, get inside here. I wanna make sure it's all evenly coated and that it all looks the same. Once you've put one coat on the handle already and it's dried, you don't really wanna go back over it unless you go over the whole thing again. And the reason why is because look at this guys, if you can see this or not. See how it, this coat dried, and then when I was going in there, see how it put like a little ring right here? Dye's weird. You gotta be careful with dye. It can, it, it's really, it's really finicky. So you gotta be careful with it. But I'm gonna show you guys why it doesn't matter to me. That it, that's on there. If you were leaving it like this, then you'd have to go back over the, the handle again and wipe it down with a paper towel if you don't want those splotch marks. Because once this dye dries on the handle um, and you go over it again, you'll leave uh, like splotchy marks. But um, I'm gonna show you guys now why it really doesn't matter for me and what I'm about to do. So the color's been applied, I've let it dry. Now to break up the color a little bit and give it some character, I'm gonna use uh, some sandpaper. I'm using 400 grit because I wanna gently sand it in some areas, give it a little bit of uh, pressure in other areas, and 220 is a little too, uh, too, too, too rough. So we're gonna do uh, 400 grit, okay? So let's just uh, kinda gently sand it here and there, kinda break up that color a little bit, give it some, give it some, some uh, character here. Give it a little character. I don't really care for handles that are too, uh, so, I mean, some of my handles are. I don't like, uh, I like a little bit of character in my handles. Just kind of break up that color a little bit in certain areas, kind of give it a worn, worn look. I like that worn, distressed looks on uh, some of my handles. Makes it look really cool. I'm just kind of wipe it down a little bit. See guys, when you start doing this, see all this, see all this? All this dye coming off. This stuff's tricky. I tested this stuff over and over and over again for a very long time until I got really good at it. If you're not careful, this stuff will bleed everywhere, so. You gotta kinda test your abilities here. All right. So now what we're gonna do is, is that we're gonna use some boiled linseed oil. I know it's in a sriracha bottle. I put <laughs> boiled linseed oil in sriracha bottles because of the top. It makes it easier to pour. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a paper towel and I'm gonna put it down here at the bottom so it doesn't run off. And I'm just gonna kinda shoot some boiled linseed oil all over this thing. Okay, coat it really good everywhere. 
and you guys will see this uh, handle is going to magically just transform once I do this. Oh, look at that. Oh yeah, that's nice. That's cool looking. I really like that. I like different looks on things, guys. Everything doesn't have to look exactly the same. I like that worn, distressed look on some of my handles. Makes it look really cool. That's really cool looking. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, kind of let it soak for a little while. And I'll pour some more on there with my hand. Make sure you guys are wearing gloves still. This bull linseed oil is not very good for you on your hands either. And just kind of rub it. I'm gonna rub it in there. Don't forget the knob. You wanna try to get that uh, knob down there at the end, soaked in. Kind of give it, I like to kind of give it some heat. Rub it in there. Let it soak in. And I'll let it sit for 10, 15 minutes. Just let it kind of soak it in there. And don't forget about your eye, guys. I'm going to flip the axe over and we're going to do the eye next. Don't forget about the eye. This is where you need linseed oil the most at. I usually just kind of just like pour on the top right here. I do have a kind of a tool inside that I use where I will, um, it's like a tool that I made out of plastic that goes around the top here. And uh, I'll pour linseed oil on an eye and just let it kind of soak without it running down the head, like on something that I've already uh, maybe refinished the head and don't want linseed oil all over, all over the head. Um, but when we're kind of like rough uh, sketching this out here and we haven't done anything to the head yet, um, I'll just kind of pour it on and let it soak for a while. Like I said, 10, 15, 20 minutes. I'll do this in intervals uh, once a day for a week. And then after that, I'll do it a couple times a week. And then after that, maybe once a month. I like to keep my handles uh, oiled. Especially my felling axes, I, I keep those oiled more. Just because, guys, the throwing axes, your handles break a lot. So I, I'll put some time in them, but not a ton of time. Um, really more so my uh, all-around axes and my felling axes, I'll do that more too. So you guys can see that or not. I'm literally just letting it pull over the top here and just letting it just soak in. It'll, it'll kind of spread out that eye a little bit more and kind of open it up on the outside of the axe head to give it more. Uh, guys, I will tell you this. If you guys get this axe, uh, all my axes um, come with a lifetime warranty on the tempering and on the axe seatment, meaning that if ever there's a time you think the uh, tempering is messed up or the axe head comes loose, you contact me, send it back to me, I will fix it, no questions asked, okay? That's how confident I am in my hafting abilities. I can't warranty handles, unfortunately, guys. I don't know what a handle's gonna do. If it breaks, it breaks. But I will warranty the tempering, and I will warranty the head fitment, okay? And that has a lifetime warranty on it that I offer to everyone, and I offer it to them on my axes that I sell on my website, and I will offer it to you on my axes. Any axe that I haft, will have come with a lifetime warranty. As long as I'm on YouTube and you can find me, there's a warranty on your ax. And I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. So keep that uh, keep that in the back of your mind that if you buy an ax from me, it does come with a lifetime warranty with uh, with all that. So, which is nice to, nice to have. All right, guys, here's the uh, final product here. Thought it was cool looking. Um, guys, get crazy with your ax handles. Uh, you can use different colors. You can mix colors. You can do all kinds of stuff. But uh, here's the <laughs> the final product here. Um, I got to kind of hurry. It's, I don't know if you guys noticed, but it's, it's dark. It's getting ready to pour down rain again. So here we go. Here's the final product. Um, I like this, guys. I think it looks really good. Um, I uh, did uh, kind of like a sanding over it, uh, give it kind of like a worn look. I like that worn look in some of my handles, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, I can do different colors. I've got a ton of different colors to do. Um, anything from black, red, brown, dark brown. I mean, you name it, I can, I can do it. So 
but I like this color. I like that plum, that plum color. I think it's cool looking. Um, another tip, guys, uh, just so you know, boiled linseed oil. Now, uh, I use the sunny side boiled linseed oil. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. I know that's not actual boiled linseed oil, but I will tell you guys this. Make sure you dispose of your stuff, okay? Um, it can spontaneously combust. I've never actually had it happen, but I will tell you this. I did use a rag one time that was coated in linseed oil, and I kind of st stuck it to the side, came back to it a couple hours later, and it was really hot. So I've never actually experienced this spontaneous combustion on uh, boiled linseed oil, but I will tell you, it does, it, do it, it gets hot. So what I do is I put mine in my burn pit, uh, rags, whatever that's covered in. I don't even put it in my trash can. So I don't recommend uh, you guys putting your gloves or your tra or your paper towels that are coated in that in the trash in your house. Take it outside, uh, spray it down with water, or leave it out in the yard for a couple days and let it air out. Um, that stuff is is pretty nasty. So that wraps up the handle, guys. I, I'm going to do a bunch of these. Okay, so if you, if this wasn't your taste. Don't worry, I'm gonna do a lot of different axes in the future with different colors, different ideas. I am gonna get into uh, a video on uh, burning your handles, charring your handles, and whether or not it's good or not, and how I do it to where I believe in my experience saves the handle uh, from basically ruining it, okay? I'm gonna do a bunch of different coats of linseed oil on here uh, before it goes to one of you, so all this uh, will be nicely treated. Um, sorry guys, I'm trying to hurry. It's about to literally pour down rain. So um, thanks for your time. I appreciate all the support. Um, guys, get into the comment section. Write some stuff. Put some stuff in there. None of nobody's commenting. Come on, there's 500 of you. Let's get let's get cracking. Let's get talking. There's too many people in here not talking. I know you could be a lurker and you just kind of watch, but and that's what I used to do too. But this is actual community. This is a real community, and I want to talk to you guys, email you guys, talk about different things, um, anything. So just let's let's get a little bit more interactive here, and let's uh, let's let's chat. So until next time, guys. See ya. Guys, this rain is really screwing with me here. As you can see over here, it's nice. <laughs> you see here, the rain is a coming. It's coming. It's literally almost here. I can't get away from it. I'm trying to make content and Mother Nature is not uh, cooperating with me. Um, it's actually starting to rain right now. I might be done for the day. Might be done. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how uh, it looks like there might be a little bit of uh, clearing behind it, but we'll see. But. Just can't get a break, guys. Can't get a break from this rain. Um, but I might go outside. I'm going to put all this stuff away. I just finished the, uh, you know, doing the axe handle and doing the um, coloring on it. I might go outside and show you guys how to throw an axe in the rain. Because a lot of people don't consider that. Your axe gets real slippery when you start throwing it in the rain. Um, so there are some things that I do to my handles to uh, help that. Because you never know when you're going to throw your axe and you can't pick the weather so you might have to throw it in the rain so let me uh let me see if it rains if it starts raining i'm coming back out here screw it i'm gonna come back out here and throw it in the rain so see ya all right guys we're close to 80 feet it's raining outside and uh your mechanics have to be everything at this distance no mistakes Let's try to throw it again, but be a little bit more accurate. And remember guys, I'm not throwing hatchets. I'm throwing axes. I'll take it. Remember, practice your mechanics. Thanks guys.